We just bought this 200 acres of old coal mine and we're gonna be turning it into the ultimate hunting land. Our plan is to cut trails, make food plots, and even reintroduce some species that are long gone from this property. And as for the rest of the species that do live here, we just wanna change the habitat to be as good as possible so that they can literally thrive. And then we're gonna come out here and hunt on it and manage it to where everything is balanced just as it needs to be. And the best part of all, we're gonna be keeping up with the wildlife before during the transformation and after to see just how much progress we're actually making for the animals. Now, the first step to transforming this property is to truly explore and find out exactly what we have that we're working with. We know we have 200 acres here located in Eastern Kentucky. So that means that about 175 of those acres is actually mountains. And that only leaves 25 acres to actually be flatland like this field right here, which we could use in the future to really make some awesome food plots, build a pond, or even build a really awesome hunting cabin which is definitely in the plans. Upon further investigation, we found out that pretty much everything except the field was really thick and we couldn't find a single road that led into them. So it ended up being an impenetrable forest that not even a four wheeler could get through. One thing that immediately caught my eye is that the field is kind of bordered with these white pines. And there's actually a reason for that. Since we're located in Eastern Kentucky, this ground actually has quite a bit of coal on it or should we say had coal on it? Because about 50 years ago, they came in, stripped the land, which made this field, took all the coal, planted back this field, and then planted those white pines on the outside of the field. And it's kind of nice that they came in, took what they wanted, but then they restored it back to where someone like me can actually come in and use it 50 years later. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows, okay? Having land on an old coal mine, definitely has its downfalls. As I explored some more on the Defender, I went down to one of the low spots and I actually figured out it's a swamp. I figured that out the hard way. We're bottomed out at ground level in a stinking swamp. This ain't good at all. This ain't good at all. It was about this time when I set out the first trail cameras on the property. And to my surprise, we actually got pictures immediately. We got some deer, looks like a fawn and a doe, just cruising through, walking down the main road. And then a little bit later, we even got some turkeys to come by. Just like the deer, it was a big hen and then a bunch of little chicks or pullets or whatever a baby turkey's called. I literally have no idea. Really good to see that we're starting off with a good population here that's already reproducing and, you know, just being strong out here. And now on to day one of the true transformation. I brought in my dad who literally does earthwork for a living and on day one he brought in his excavator so that he could start clearing out the main road so that we could have access from the entry point all the way in here to this field. He also brought a bobcat so that he could start clearing out some brush to where we'd actually have places to turn around and could actually see further than about six feet. And so why was it so thick? Well, this property was actually logged about 15 years ago. And that means that a lot of the really old trees are gone. And so their kids, small trees, are learning things left. Long story short, it's pretty thick for now. But while my dad was clearing out the roads and clearing out some brush, we kept those cameras up and we started getting even more pictures. We even got these videos of some pretty decent bucks just walking through where my dad had been clearing brush literally hours earlier. Once he got the main access road cleared out, he started going up the mountain a little bit, venturing onto one of the old logging roads. This was so that we could have access into the woods a little bit, somewhere we'd previously never even been able to get into at all just too thick. As day one ended, the trail camera started lighting up again. We started getting pictures of quite a few does that honestly came back pretty regularly. And then we got pictures of a dog, which I'm not happy about, but it is what it is. Then we got pictures of a coyote. Coyotes are actually a really important part of the ecosystem, but uh, yeah, we do want to kill pretty much every single one we can because we can kill every coyote we possibly can and there'll still be tons of them on the property. If coyotes and predators are left unchecked, they'll really wreak havoc on all your small game, like a rabbit squirrels, turkeys, and all those upland birds like we talked about trying to bring back to the property. So yeah, with this place, we're basically gonna be going pretty hard on the coyotes. On day two, my dad only worked a half day. He just came in with the excavator, cleared out some more trails, and did a little bit more of what he could. Worked on some ditches and stuff as well. But that evening, me and my buddy Adam actually came out here and wanted to check up on the wildlife a little bit more. And the reason we got really excited about the wildlife, I was out walking around and I actually found these. We found bear prints on the new property. We may have just added an animal to the animal list, and I'm not talking about the squirrel that's squacking at me. Look what I just found. Um, hello. Y'all see what I'm seeing? That's 100% evidence. 
of a bear. We went to Walmart. We bought like three new cameras. We dumped out 50 pounds of corn, put some vanilla extract all over it. We want pictures of this bear. If we can get a picture of that big black bear by the end of the year, we win, okay? Unfortunately, that trail cam check, we never got pictures of him, but we did get more pictures of just some overall more animals that were here. We got a lot more deer. We got some more coyotes. I think we even got like an owl and maybe even a vulture, which was really cool. And then on the corn that we dumped out, we got a spike and a doe that literally, and I'm telling you, literally came back every single night. And that was the only animals that ever came to the corn. I think that's kind of crazy. Like surely something else would have found the corn, but no, it didn't. Just a spike and a doe, which is awesome, but I was expecting a little bit more, not gonna lie. As I was heading home at the end of day two, I actually got stuck again. I don't know guys, I'm pretty good at getting stuck out here. This time it's a lot worse. Since the hunting lane used to be an old coal mine, there used to be a lot of equipment here. And somewhere, somehow, I got a big bolt stuck in my tire, which instantly put me on a flat. One thing led to another, I fixed up the tire, I got back home. Day three, after me and Adam saw that those bear prints were there, we started picking out guns that we could keep with us just in case something got crazy with the bear. We also set up this redneck charging bear rig, which is tied up with a dolly and a boat rope. I mean, not gonna lie, it actually worked out pretty good, I think. I burned up his nose, that's for sure. And then we headed on up to the property where my cousin had actually been working, clearing us out some trails. He was building trails so fast. By the time me and my buddy Adam got here to check in on him, he had been here for four hours and had already created miles and miles of trails just with an excavator. What he would do is find an old logging trail, which still had trees growed up all in it, but he would just take the excavator, reach out, grab the trees, rip them off, sling them over, and he'd use the bucket to dig out and make it even as he went along. He was moving so fast. And around that time, I actually just released my new trail camera, the Gen 2 KG trail camera. And me and Adam set up a few of those all around the property so that we could get high quality HD video of the animals that roam around the property. I guess we got a little too excited with the new trails. We tried to hit some that we probably shouldn't have hit and uh, we got stuck. All right guys, I'm standing level right now. So y'all are not standing level right now. And we're stuck again. So here we go with the rope. What if it just lets go and just rolls downhill? <laughs> Something to stop it. At the end of the day, my dad had cleared out a nice flat spot. Me and Adam wanted to, you know, we wanted to make it a little bit better, okay? We wanted to plant something. Maybe make it like a little food plot. So we headed on down to Tractor Supply. We looked at all the different food plot mixes they have. Um, newsflash, everything that has a picture of a deer on it is more expensive simply because it has a picture of a deer on it. But regardless, we bought some anyways. I came back, spread it out, and hopefully here in a few days or something, we'll get to see if it done any good. Day four in the transformation of the ultimate hunting land, the dozer came. When my cousin got on the dozer, he was working five times as fast as he was on the excavator. And he was doing more than just clearing out trails. He was also going through making flat spots and clearing them out so that we can come in and make food plots later. And we're talking like acre sized food plots that are up in the mountain. We're not dealing with the bottom anymore. We're putting food in the mountain, which I think will be perfect because a lot of those big bucks don't want to come out here in the open during the day, but they shouldn't be afraid to go up and hit a half acre flat spot up in the mountain, should they? It should be the perfect place to hunt. And all the trail systems that we've went through and we've made, that should literally turn into wildlife highways that the deer, coyotes, raccoons, and even bears they just get on them and go wherever they want to go. With it being September and getting colder every day, I knew that if I wanted to plant something on them food plots, I needed to go ahead and do it now. So I headed on down to my local farm store. I bought some winter wheat because I heard that was good. And then I also bought some winter rye. Both of those are supposed to be all right for this time of year because they're actually grow throughout the winter. Unlike most plants that only grow in the summer and spring. Me and my uncle double teamed it. We both got a seed spreader and we just walked around the food plots spreading seeds everywhere we could. On some of the plots, we even mixed in a little bit of clay over. That way we had a good equal seed mix that should really take up good in all the types of places we put it. On days five and six, my dad got in the excavator, my cousin on the dozer, and they really just hit the trails as hard as they could. They really put focus into making a very complex trail system because y'all know just as well as I do, in order for us to get the most out of this 200 acres, we kind of got to be able to access 
more than 15 of it. And that's exactly what the trails did. Now we have a great trail system that's literally like veins in your arm, goes through the mountains and connects. And like I was saying, not only for us, but also deer highways. At the end of day six, my dad went and bought some gravel, which we're gonna to use to pave the main road. The pavements are just a little bit big and so I can open up one more. Let me kick it. This is super important because if you just leave it mud, over time it's gonna rain. Sometimes it'll rain a week straight. It's gonna get swampy. Everything's gonna get muddy and you might even get stuck. Putting down these gravels will make the main access road really sturdy, especially since we plan on doing a lot of work up in here, like building a pond, building a cabin, and of course hauling a bunch of big bucks out of here. We want the main access road to be in really good shape because we're going to be using it a lot. There were points where my cousin was actually so deep up in that mountain with the dozer that he got himself stuck a few times. He was actually pushing a tree out of the way and the tree came back and fell on him. I had to get on the defender, ride up those long trails and then pull out the machete and finally had to chop him out where he could actually get out and keep working. Boys, well, there you go. You never know what a $5 machete can do for you. Now look at the trees. Now he's killing them. Making him pay for that. After we got unstuck, I did pull a card out of my trail camera and went home and checked it. Now that is interesting. Oh my gosh! That is huge! Oh. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, boys! That thing's sick and massive! Wait a minute. That's a different deer. There's two big ones. This one's tight racked, kind of close together. Then if you go back to this one, he ain't tight rack. Oh my goodness. So far we've discovered these three bucks, which are actually pretty good, possible shooters, and definitely something to watch for the next few years. So I need you guys to go on down and comment below a name for the dark horned buck, a name for the tight racked buck, and a name for the half rack buck. That way we can keep up with these bucks on a first name basis. As we cleared out the trails and cleared out the brush, we had to do something with all the brush and all the trees that we got off the trails. So we piled them up in this giant brush pile, and then the best thing we could do with them is to just burn it. So I pulled out the flamethrower, lit that baby on fire this flamethrower is awesome by the way made a video about it on my gun channel you have to check that out later we lit that thing on fire and buddy we just let that brush pile burn dad hit it with the excavator my cousin hit it with the dozer just kept on stacking the brush stacking the brush and stacking the brush until eventually it was all burning up super hot burning everything it touched and a big fire like this is a win-win not only do you get rid of all the brush and trees but you're also making super fertile soil that we can push over that field which should make that food plot yield way better for the deer and animals that eat it. Day eight, my dad and cousin's making the finishing touches on the trails, making them all nice and smooth. And we get to step in and see what kind of progress our seeds are doing. You know, the seeds that we planted like four or five, six days ago. Let's see how they actually did. This right here is one of the plots we planted. It's not looking good at all, guys. It's, it's not looking good. Hey man, you win some, you lose some. We absolutely lost this one. But you can see that over here on the edges, it's actually doing okay. I mean, it's still not great. A farmer would be disappointed. But then you look back there and it's doing amazing. Look at this. I think this is the winter wheat and maybe a little bit of rye mixed in, but look, this is growing absolutely, literally amazing. Look at that. And then look at that over there. It's growing so great in some areas and then others it's just not. Honestly guys, oh snap, look at that. Look what a deer print. So that's a big deer. That's potentially a buck. I can't confirm right now where it's just sloppy in the mud, but hey. That over there is damp and in the shade. This over here is crusty and in the sun. This food plot, eh, about a two out of 10. Here's another field that we plant in winter wheat. It's honestly, I mean, it's looking a little bit better. You can see it's like pretty sparse where the little ones that come up. And of course, in the shaded spots, it's actually came up much better. You can't mess with the facts. It's just been a dry month. And whenever it's dry, it's a little bit harder for things to grow. I'm not disappointed in this plot though. I feel like one, two good rains and this is really gonna pick up. Also in this wheat plot, we put down a bag of corn just to see what we could get. And then I ended up putting up this tree stand. I don't know if I actually like it, but I don't know, it's here. For the corn, we got a few pictures of deer, but mainly just a lot of videos of raccoons. Like I'm not even kidding. There's about a pack of four raccoons that come to this corn pile every single night, no matter what. It kind of makes me want to sit out here and maybe hunt them or something. We're going to leave them be for now, but it is pretty cool that these four raccoons came out of what I think nowhere and really just started going to that corn pile every single night. I'm not putting corn back, so it's going to be interesting to see what they do. But what about the tractor supply mix that I literally overpaid a lot for? Well, I mean, I'll tell you what, buddy, it's sure not doing that great at all. I mean, for what I paid for it, you'd, you'd hope this looked like a stinking garden at some kind of big hotel or something, but it sure ain't. It's just looking like grass. It's not looking any better than the seed I bought at the farm store. Honestly, kind of disappointed. Did I buy the wrong seeds? 
probably, but still, I paid a lot for them. I figured they'd work. For the end of day eight, we're bringing in two new big pieces of machinery. We're bringing in the Volvo, an articulated truck that's made to haul a lot of dirt in dirty places. It has a giant bed on top so that it can just haul big rocks, tons of dirt, wherever we want it. And then you see those big wheels, all six of them. Absolutely massive. And one of those tires can't even fit in a truck bed. That's how big they are. You got a ton of traction, it can drive in mud, and it will keep on going. And right now, we're actually waiting to escort in an even bigger excavator than we're using right now. That's really hard to say. I don't know why. It's a big one, guys. We're moving a lot of dirt. It's got bigger tracks, bigger bucket, a bigger motor. Everything in this excavator is about twice as big as the other one. And so why are we bringing in all this new machinery? Well, our next project is that we're gonna be building a giant two acre pond up to 35 feet deep in certain spots and we're gonna make it the ultimate fishing pond. And so not only are we gonna have the ultimate hunting land, but right on the hunting lane, we're gonna have the ultimate fishing pond. Literally year round fun. And I'll tell you what guys, I'm wanting to bring some of y'all out here to come fishing and hunting with me. Subscribe if you're not already because the land transformation is far from done. But right here real soon, we're starting in on that pond.